Let's go to Ramallah. Let's speak to the Palestinian political uh, uh, the politician Hanan Aswari, who's a member of the PLO Executive Committee and the Palestinian Legislative Council. Thank you so much for being here on the programme with us on the BBC. You, Your reaction to this news? I think this is disastrous. It's not well thought out. It is in direct uh, contradiction of the most basic requirements of peace. It violates international law. It shows total bias uh, in favor of Israel. It shows an accommodation of uh, illegal annexation of Jerusalem. It shows an accommodation and support for um, uh, occupation and for force and military violence. And at the same time, it says we recognize reality. What is reality? The law should be the basis of any recognition, international law as well as the imperatives of peace. What he's doing is saying we are going to do everything to scuttle the chances of peace, to destroy the chances of peace, and at the same time we think this is in the service of peace. In his mad rush to try to show that he's different from other presidents, he did not stop to think about what made the peace process fail. What made the peace process fail is uh, the U.S. bias towards Israel, Israeli impunity, is, uh, the U.S. cover for Israeli violations and violence against the Palestinians, and its total disregard for international law and international humanitarian let law. Me, this is why the peace process has failed. Let, now, let, let, me ask you, just because let me ask you another question. I mean, he talks about not uh, repeating failed mistakes. In your view, that peace process uh, or moves to try to make progress, is, is that totally torpedoed now in your mind? Yeah, I think that uh, he's just paying lip service. He really is insulting our intelligence, talking about commitment to peace and let's all make peace. What he's doing is encouraging the anti-peace elements. He is encouraging the most extreme, hardline warmongers in Israel. This coalition in Israel is certainly the most racist and the most hardline government in the history of Israel, and they're systematically destroying the chances of peace, and he's cast his lot with them. And at the same time, he's letting down all the people who have fought for decades in order to legitimize the language of reconciliation, of peace, of negotiations, of legality and justice, and he's saying it doesn't work. What you have to do is might makes right. And this also well, encourages and emboldens not just the Israeli extremists, but also extremists on the other side well, and throughout the well, world. Well, let me ask you, let me, ask, let me actually ask extremism. you about exactly that point, because there are groups, you will know, that uh, have called already for three days of rage. As a key Palestinian leader, what would your call be? Is, is that a call that you support, or would you be urging calm, as we heard from Donald Trump just a few moments ago? That, that's not the issue. I mean, he says one thing and does the other. He urges calm and then provokes everybody beyond endurance. How dare you ur urge calm when you are provoking their religious sentiments, spiritual sentiments, where you are turning their history into a forgery, their land is given away to others, legitimizing land theft and confiscation, and transforming Jerusalem into a historical forgery. This is a Palestinian city, and as such, it belongs to the Palestinian to the Palestinian people. And you cannot say, I will choose where I want my, my uh, capital. I would very much like to conquer England and take over London and make it my capital. But this Israel has taken over Jerusalem by war. It has annexed it illegally. It is a Palestinian city. They do not have the right nor the freedom to make it their capital. What, what now, can you actually you do about it? About violence. When people are, what, what, what people can you are angry, actually do about it? Angry. What, what can you actually do about it in I reality? Think we, we should, yes, in reality what we should do is go to the international community. We have to take Israel to the International Criminal Court. It has to be held accountable. This impunity has to stop. This total disregard of international law and justice has to stop. This American collusion, and I'm not saying all Americans, there are many Americans who are just, there are many people all over the world who understand the requirements of peace. But obviously, this president thinks that he can be, make his mark and his distinctiveness by destroying the very chances of peace and subjecting the whole region to greater instability, greater violence, and feeding extremism and terrorism. This is an absolutely irresponsible position. Very quick final thought, just a sentence or two, if you would. I think at the end of Donald Trump, he said Mike Pence would be heading to the region. If various yeah. delegates are sent to try to move peace and move, move it forward, are those conversations you will have now? 
Look, Mike Pence has been talking about God's will. He's not talking politics. He's talking biblical dogma and exegesis. My God did not tell me what his God tells him. I belong to the oldest Christian tradition in the world, and I don't believe that God ordained that the world has to be unjust to the Palestinians. We are the original Christians. We are the owners of the land. We are the people who've been here for centuries. How dare they come here and give me biblical uh, treatises and, and absolutist positions. If he wants to talk politics, legality, humanity, morality, fine, he will find people. If he wants to come and tell me it's been ordained, this is what the Bible told me, then I think he should go preach in a, in a church rather than talk politics. But the real issue now okay. is not who's coming to visit. It's what the message is. What is the policy? What is the commitment? And so far, it's extremely discouraging, it's extremely disheartening, and it is extremely dangerous. All right, Hanan Ashwari, we will leave it there, but thanks very much for being here on the program. I want to take you now to uh, uh, New York and the United Nations to show you the live pictures there, because as well as uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, Abbas that we're expecting to uh, hear from, we're also going to hear from uh, the Secretary General of the UN. Uh, the camera's all set up there, because uh, in the next little while, we are expecting the Secretary General to make comments after listening to what uh, Donald Trump had to say. Listening and watching still with me, is Luce Doucette and Lise, well I'm going to hold off there because there you see the Secretary General move towards the podium so uh, let's cross over